My name's Chris Coxon and I'm one of the extension officers working for Dairy Co in the southwest. And we're here to talk about the issue of starlings on farm uh, and the influence it has and the effect it has on cow management and farm performance. We're here on a farm in Somerset, uh, very close to some in Somerset levels, and so the, the uh, risk from starlings uh, coming up free feeding on these farms is relatively high, and especially for this farm and surrounding farms. Not many discussion group meetings go by over the winter without the issues of starlings cropping up. So we feel it's a, it's a big issue uh, on farms at the minute to, to try and uh, address and see what we can do. Chris Dibble approached me uh, in terms of how we can help uh, put some actual numbers on the issue of starlings. So even things like how many starlings uh, are actually uh, affecting these farms and the issue in terms of finance, in terms of eating ration uh, and the effects and the social aspects in terms of uh, people working on these farms. And then from there we put out a tender process uh, and King's Egg Farming Trust uh, came out with a very good bid uh, in terms of doing the work, looking at starling numbers, uh, the effect it has on cow rations, uh, and also the behaviour in terms of times of day that starlings come in, times that they leave, uh, and ultimately what farmers could do and start to do in terms of management strategies for, for keeping starlings away. Starlings are a protected species, um, so at best all we can do is actually scare the birds away uh, and stop them settling on farms and stop them actually feeding on the ration uh, and causing a nuisance in that way. We've had a large problem over the last 10 years with flocks of starlings coming in throughout the winter feeding period. This reached a high about two or three years ago and we had tremendous problems with cow health and management problems uh, as a result of this. We experienced lots of milk yield drops and uh, cow dietary upsets. We've estimated these losses have reached several tens of thousands of pounds each winter. The annual invasion of tens of thousands of starlings has made it very difficult for us to accurately ration our cows throughout the winter. We either have to accept a milk yield drop of two or three litres because the birds have eaten the feed that the cows should have eaten, or add extra feed in to account for this loss. For several winters we tried various ways of trying to scare the birds away with either electronic bird scarers or gas guns or partially bird proofing buildings but none of this was proving effective. The birds soon got used to any scarers that we tried. Some people might think that it's easy to bird proof a building but we found this not to be the case. The, the sleep feed building that we're stood in now, we've managed to net all the openings or put wire mesh above the doors but we still find that the birds swoop in underneath the doors where the automatic scrapers are and through, even through the door handles they'll come in one at a time there. So by the end of uh, an hour you would have many thousands of birds actually trapped in the building if you're not careful. As a result of this we felt we needed to have some actual hard data to go along with the anecdotal evidence that we as a group of farmers had. And uh, we approached Dairy Co to see if they'd be able to commission some research into this problem. As a result of the Dairy Co involvement, ourselves and several of our neighbours have had King's Hay on farm throughout this winter to try and monitor the number of birds that have been coming in on a daily basis. They've taken samples of the feed in the morning and again in the afternoon to see if there's any differences in feed value. Kings Hay have also taken samples of the maize pits at the beginning of the day and at the end of the day to see if the silage that the birds rake down while they're feeding on the maize face has altered in feed value. Kings Hay are also monitoring the structure of the cow's ration to see if that changes through the day as the birds eat certain components of it. The current project uh, is down to run from last November up until March uh, to obviously hit the, the main kind of feeding time and the main risk time for starlings on farm. Uh, and then hopefully on the back of that there'll be um, a report with some findings and some, and some real, uh, real concrete evidence in terms of the effect it's having on farms. Uh, there's four farms very closely monitored in the study, uh, a further ten uh, in terms of actually involvement and, and seeing in terms of numbers on the farm. So there's quite a range of farms involved and there should be some very good uh, data to come from it.